getting in the middle of October now and the buck sign is starting to show up, this is a time when it starts to make sense to get out there and do that final uh, pre-rut scouting. You don't want to leave a lot of scent. In-season scouting is kind of a, a ticklish thing. Uh, a little bit of it can be too much if you're not careful. So you want to make sure that whatever you do, uh, you're really uh, keeping an eye on your scent, uh, not uh, uh, making any impact on the area that you're hunting. Otherwise, you're scouting, all it's going to do is educate deer. So anyway, let's get back to this whole subject of buck sign. When I first started out bow hunting, I had permission on tons of farms. It was in the area where I grew up. I knew everybody was related to half of the county. So I used to do a lot of scouting in the middle of October. The reason was uh, because the buck sign was or the rut sign was starting to lay down. It's really tempting though to uh, to take that information uh, too seriously. And what I mean by that is you may find a rub and you think, oh, there's the spot, uh, or you may find a scrape and, and throw a tree stand up, thinking, you know, the buck that made this is going to come back again. Uh, sometimes that works, but really what buck sign is. Uh, is an indication of where the buck was, not necessarily where he's going to be again. But the way that the deer relate to the terrain is more consistent than how they relate to the sign that they've left. A lot of times the sign shows up in the areas where they travel through. The reason they travel through there is because it makes sense to them, either from a, a path of least resistance, you're know, getting from point A to point B, you know, they go through a saddle or they you know, follow some type of a break in the terrain, that makes it easier for them, or sometimes it has to do with the fact that they're going with maximum security. So instead of crossing an open field, they're gonna stick with some low spots, or they're gonna follow a brushy fence line, or something like that. The only sign that makes a lot of sense to hunt are scraped lines on believable travel routes back in the timber in the last 10 days or so of October. Uh, you get past that point into the rut, and everything is in the blender. You know, bucks are off chasing does, they're off you know, covering ground, they're not following uh, sort of the patterns that they laid out in October. The reason those scrapes are there along that travel route is because that's the way the buck is going for some reason. He's not necessarily going there to freshen those scrapes. The scrapes are showing up there because that's where he travels. Uh, rubs don't mean a whole lot uh, other, other than the fact that you know a buck is in that area. Uh, people talk about signpost rubs as being sort of a, uh, an indicator of a buck's you know, historical travel route. That doesn't necessarily mean it's the same buck every time. And you can take a great big tree like this, and you can say, well, that's gotta be made by a big buck, you know, a mature deer. And there might be some research to indicate that, and I've studied all that stuff, but I've also seen an awful lot of year and a half old bucks working on trees that were this big around. One piece of sign that does hold a lot of information at this time is tracks. Small deer don't make big tracks. So if you find a big set of tracks, bigger than normal, then the likelihood of that being made by a mature buck is fairly high. So you might want to scout field edges, uh, especially after a rain. So keep tracks in mind. Um, they will give you some information that can help you to pick out which part of your hunting area to spend your time. So overall though, uh, don't fall into the trap of trying to pattern specific deer based on sign. Uh, I tried that for a lot of years and it's really tough. Uh, I never got any good at it. I always felt like I was one step behind the action. I was always hunting the places where the bucks had been rather than where they were going to be. So focus on believable travel routes. Uh, let the rut get things stirred up, get the deer moving, and send them past your stand. Well, that's it for this tip. Check back again in the future for another tip right here at AmericanHunter.org.